yes, in a way, this is by far his most indulgent, most shameless, most I don't give a shit, I'm Chris motherfucking Nolan type of movie. Hello, I'm Geraldine Hickey. Oh, that's it. Tenant is done. And I'm Nina Oyama. And you're watching Open Source Review, a show where we take polarising moments in pop culture and dissect them with the help from people on the internet. This week, we're reviewing Tenet. Which took you a surprisingly long time to watch. Well, I mean, it's technically two movies, one going forward and one going backwards. Yet somehow, it feels like three movies. It's kind of impressive that a film about time manipulation literally slowed down time for me. All I have for you is a word. Tenet. It'll open the right doors some of the wrong ones too. Pop quiz. Did you know that Tenet, spelled backwards, is Tenet? Yeah, so is Mum and Dad. Yeah, but are they part of a secret organisation brokering a war between the future and the past? Well, Dad does have dementia, so... Oh, whatever. Let's get into it. Tenet is a two and a half hour action sci-fi thriller starring John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, Kenneth Branagh and Michael Caine in one scene where he plays, wait for it, the same old English guy he plays in every Christopher Nolan flick. Hello, I'm Michael Caine and I have a mission for you, governor. Exactly like that. Tenet's a new film starring Christopher Nolan. Well, it's written and directed by Christopher Nolan. <laughs> I just feel like Christopher Nolan movies are really Christopher Nolan's a star. Yes, it does seem to be about him. He's had a really good track record. His previous films include blockbusters Inception, Dunkirk, Interstellar, the two best Batman films, and The Dark Knight Rises. But Tenet is... It's like Inception on steroids. So Washington plays a secret agent who's just called The Protagonist. I'm the protagonist. Like what Brandon on Facebook posted? I can't believe they didn't even give the main guy a name. Uh, yeah they did. First name The, last name Protagonist. He joins a secret organisation called Tenant, where they can travel back through time by literally moving backwards. They call this moving backwards technology inversion. He's like, you're not shooting the bullet, you're catching, catching the bullet. Like, what? Damn. But if you're lost with this inversion thing, don't worry, so was pretty much everyone else. It's best described as... Basically, some people and objects are moving backwards in time. The people moving forwards in time can interact with them. But then the rest of the story is him and his crew trying to stop a Russian, was it Ukrainian, some bad dude, from ending the world. Basically, a time travel concept with a James Bond spy story bolted on. That was a great synopsis, Nina. But I found this tweet that sums it up perfectly for me. A man goes back in time so he can go forward in time and vice versa bullets go back into guns out of holes. That's probably all anyone will remember from it. Speaking of holes, you know how they're moving backwards in time and things are in reverse? Stop right there, I know what you're gonna say. And yes, when you are going to the bathroom throughout your day, what will happen is your poop will come out of the toilet before you sit down. That's not what I was gonna say. Oh. Tenet has a Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 76% and on Metacritic, 69%. Nice. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but compared to the previous Rotten Tomato scores for films like Inception at 91 and The Dark Knight at 94, Nolan's parents are not angry, they're just disappointed. Yeah, I would probably give it a five out of 10 if I'm being honest. It has divided a lot of people, but there hasn't been much love for Tenet in the comments of our last video. So Geraldine, what's your take? Well, when I sat down to think about this review, I felt exactly like Grace does on Letterboxd. I'll write an actual review when I can figure out what the f happened. Yes, Grace, we hear you. My biggest problem with this film is that I feel it goes deliberately out of its way to be convoluted and confusing, to make you feel dumb. I'm not dumb. I understand the concept of time travel. A five-year-old can understand the concept of time travel. Or, but if you watch it again, it makes more sense. Do you know how many good movies are out there that are entertaining the first time round? Heaps. From the terminal, from their private planes. I saw it in the cinema and it's really hard to hear the dialogue over the loud music, which didn't help, as many of you have also mentioned. What do you know about opera? I watched it on my phone with subtitles, so I'm like fully across the dialogue. Although it was kind of like reading my high school physics textbook. 
But even with subtitles, I still had to do a lot of reading afterwards and then watch YouTube videos to fully understand it because there is so much weird science talk. I don't think you could really understand a lot of the plot if you don't actually know some of the ideas that uh, Nolan was exploring. Um, and there's not just one complex theory involved in the story, there's quite a few. I love this post. Heath on Twitter says, a $200 million physics lesson masquerading as a movie. Does your head hurt you? Yes. You know how in the film the protagonist gets given a word and a gesture? Tenet. Oh, here's a word and a gesture for you, Tenet. No. There was a point in this movie where the world was about to end and I did not give a shit if it ended or not. I didn't know anyone, I didn't care about the characters. There's just no backstory for them. I could not even tell you one of the names of the characters. I have to go look it up on the internet. That's how, you know, impersonal this movie is. Because they all feel like they're just there to service the plot and only that. I just think this movie lacks a heart and a soul. There's no time in the film spent building the characters or their relationships. The protagonist's willingness to risk the mission and his life for that tall lady character just doesn't make any sense. Like Hannah on Twitter points out, they didn't even kiss, what's with that? The film spends all of its time explaining itself and it forgets about the characters. That's the major problem I have with the film. The characters were so hollow. Geraldine, do you remember how in the film, the protagonist starts his story by having to talk to a guy to get the lowdown? Yeah, then that guy tells him to talk to someone else. And then that someone else tells him to go and have lunch with Michael Caine. But he doesn't eat because Michael Caine tells him to go and talk to someone else. Oh my God. It feels like watching a bunch of beautiful movie stars in expensive restaurants read um, Wikipedia pages for like an hour. Speaking of beautiful movies, Movie stars, I did like Robert Pattinson, thought he was a very charismatic performer. Oh, absolutely. His character and the protagonist had this potential buddy relationship that they didn't go into enough. Maybe if they'd focused on the relationship between them two, it would have been a better movie. Yeah, maybe they should have kissed. Sorry, it's been a long lockdown. I'm very frustrated. Show me that I've seen too much. So I didn't really like Tenet either, but I did like quite a few elements of it. Brian on Twitter says, it was okay, but I walked out of the cinema backwards just to mess with people. Classic Brian. I really enjoyed watching this film. The spectacle is awe-inspiring. Visually, it's miraculous. The movie Tenet is going to help expand consciousness. Yeah, not sure about shifting my consciousness there. That's going a bit too far. But I agree with Chris from YouTube. It is visually stunning and it looks really good. And the car chase is amazing. I mean, there's one car going forwards and one car going backwards at the same time. And as someone that has turned into a one-way street the wrong direction many times, I felt very represented. Tenet has less than 300 visual effects shots, which Nolan has pointed out is less than the average rom-com. Yes, but that fight scene, that over-choreographed fight scene, oh, I'm gonna put my arm up here, I'm gonna block this, I'm gonna block that. Ugh. What, did you want them to just punch each other? Yes. Look, I have to say, my other favorite thing was the bad guy character played by Kenneth Branagh. There was a surprising amount of camp factor, especially in Branagh's villain, when he was all like, oh, I'm going to cut your balls off and stick them down your throat. <laughs> and then later, when Washington is about to be murdered by Kenneth Branagh with a gun, he's like, hey buddy, what about the balls in my throat? <laughs> he doesn't sound like that, but it is close enough. But if the whole movie had that kind of level of campiness, it would have been so much fun. That part is a little dramatic. Okay, so Tenet is still out in the cinema and now at home. And apparently the film makes more sense the 10th time you watch it. Geraldine, would you watch Tenet again? Nah, mate, I don't care. Nolan is obviously a skilled filmmaker, but like Pip, the pooper trooper, said on Instagram, so much potential, great idea, just poorly executed. I think I might watch it again, actually, just to see if I understand it yet. And that's Tenet. Don't forget to share your thoughts by posting in the comments on socials. And while you're at it, let us know what we should review next. Personally, I'm hanging out for Cats 2. Now that's a film that's going to save cinema.